extraordinary, visionary, transformative. Today, DARPA delivers new capabilities to our warfighters, new ways of responding to threats to our country. But let's go back for a moment. The year was 1957. America woke up to some shocking news. Our Cold War nemesis, the Soviet Union, had launched something into space. The world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik. Suddenly, they had the high ground. Within months, the Department of Defense established the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, later to add a D for defense to become DARPA, to make sure that in the future, it would be us, not our adversaries, who would be rolling out game-changing technological advances. And our advances since then have been astounding. Join me as we take a look at some of this amazing technology and speculate at what might be just around the corner. Siri, cue the music. Siri, tell me a fun fact about DARPA. A DARPA research program delivered the artificial intelligence technology that ultimately led to digital assistants, like me. In 2003, DARPA funded the PAL program, Personalized Assistant That Learns. The goal was to bring more flexibility and efficiency to military decision making. At the labs of SRI, PAL brought together the best minds in cognitive software and machine learning. The core technology spun into the private sector to a startup named Siri. And when Apple saw what Siri could do, the rest is history. When DARPA tackles tough national security problems, the solutions sometimes benefit everybody, like the internet. We don't give it much thought. We grab our laptop, hop online and order groceries, stream the latest superhero movie, or collaborate with colleagues at work. Back in the 1960s, when DARPA was a young federal agency, that all sounded like science fiction. Computers filled entire rooms and had less computational power than one of these. And it was nearly impossible to send data from one unit to another. There was an urgent need to connect these computers for science and for national security. Two DARPA program managers, Robert Kahn and Vint Cerf, led a brilliant team that developed the foundational standards for software and hardware to link computer networks. By the 70s, their hard work began to pay off. A group of four interconnected computer network nodes called ARPANET would spawn other networks and swiftly expand into the society-changing internet. As computers got more powerful, they also got much smaller, thanks to another revolutionary technology, the microchip. An achievement of engineering crafted in silicon, their little packages of breakthroughs in computing power, miniaturization, and efficiency. DARPA's groundbreaking material science and manufacturing programs furthered the relentless cause of miniaturization, leading to more powerful microprocessors and denser memory. These programs also pushed beyond silicon, using gallium arsenide and gallium nitride to create new generations of high-performance semiconductors. They make battlefield weapons smarter cell communication systems more capable, and all of our many devices smaller. And they're at the heart of some pretty helpful tools. Take GPS, the global positioning system, originally called Navstar, required bulky receivers. But in the early 80s, DARPA program manager Sherman Karp proposed leveraging advances in digital signaling and miniaturization. He said he could get a unit down to the size of this. Soon it was a reality, a miniature GPS receiver nicknamed Virginia Slims.
tiny computers and ever more sensitive receivers turn cell phones into smartphones with a multitude of capabilities. Today, we get a lot of our entertainment right here. That's where these amazing screens come in, made possible with the help of DARPA-supported research on the high-performance polymers inside LCD screens and bringing brilliant displays to the palm of your hand. Another DARPA technology led to advances on the big screen as well. Digital micromirror projection was a commercial success that won Emmy and Academy Awards in technical achievement. Micromirror technology is an example of microelectromechanical systems, MIMS for short. MIMS are very tiny controllable moving parts. DARPA-funded research in MIMS has yielded major advances that provided the basis for the position and navigation capabilities of today's smartphones, game controllers, gyroscopes, and precision timing devices. DARPA didn't set out to create the smartphone, but a lot of the tech inside them came from DARPA's foundational investments. It's a great example of how groundbreaking research in one area can have a profound effect on another. This might look like any other car, but it has one distinct feature. It drives itself. The dream of a driverless vehicle has been part of our collective consciousness since the first Model Ts rolled off the assembly line. Autonomous vehicles promise to bring great advantages to the battlefield and society. An impossible dream? Not for DARPA. To spark development, DARPA organized a series of autonomous vehicle challenges. Competitors combined innovative sensors, machinery, artificial intelligence, and other technologies in ways that never had been done before. And that first time out, no winners. But the competitors learned a lot. Less than a year later, a team from Stanford won the challenge. Okay, so you can cross a desert. How about a city? In DARPA's 2007 Urban Challenge, autonomous vehicles had to navigate traffic, perform complex maneuvers like passing, merging, parking, and negotiating intersections. This time, Carnegie Mellon's boss vehicle was the first to finish. Stanford's entry came in second, followed by four other finishers. This groundbreaking event was the first time autonomous vehicles interacted with both manned and unmanned traffic in an urban environment. Although the technology was initially developed in response to military needs, consumer companies embraced the opportunities it presented. Experimental self-driving cars are on the road today with technology that keeps getting smaller and smarter. A staple of science fiction that's rapidly becoming reality is the merging of humans and machines. DARPA's approach is to make that interaction more natural and productive. In the early days of computers, it was a challenge for programmers to interact with them. Clunky, slow, and not very user-friendly. Enter the DARPA-funded Augmentation Research Center, led by SRI engineer Douglas Engelbart. At a conference in 1968, he conducted what's now known as the mother of all demos, showcasing his team's vision of the future of computing. A network, an easy to use graphical interface, and an input device to navigate around the screen and click to initiate commands. He called it a mouse because it had a tail. This humble appearing innovation would develop into an emblem of the personal computer revolution of the 1980s, and millions of people still use one every day. Now DARPA is pushing the direct connection between human and computer even further to improve the lives of military personnel who have lost limbs in combat. As part of DARPA's revolutionizing prosthetics program, inventor Dean Kamen and his colleagues developed smart prosthetics, like the Luke arm, that are more like real limbs. The modular prosthetic limb being developed at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory is controlled by signals from the user's brain. Now, researchers are refining a potentially game-changing advance getting the signals to go both ways so that these fingers can feel. 
Digital technology has had profound effects on our lives, but sometimes opening the door to opportunity also lets in new threats. Through competitions like the Cyber Grand Challenge in 2016, DARPA has been inspiring the next generation of innovators to develop autonomous cyber solutions that can detect and patch software vulnerabilities at machine speed. DARPA has had a hand in guiding some very cool tech, from phones to drones, and a whole lot of experiments and proofs of concepts that one day could be ready for prime time. At pivotal moments, when one advance in science suggests that another amazing innovation might be possible, DARPA continues to ask, what if? What if you could make the flu a thing of the past? What if you could learn a new language in a few days? What if? You could store all the information in the Library of Congress in a device no bigger than a sugar cube. What if robots could help us respond to disasters where humans can't go? No doubt some DARPA projects are laying the groundwork for these and other life-changing technologies right now. 60 years after Sputnik's wake-up call, DARPA-driven technology has given our military an advantage on the battlefield while often delivering enormous benefits to society. DARPA remains committed to facing these challenges head on, embracing the audacious ideas that can keep us safe and enhance our everyday lives.